for more great videos and learning tutorials, or to download the exercises that go with these videos, please visit our website at www.createthenet.com. That was www.createthenet.com. Hello, and welcome to our video series on Quick Tips for Dreamweaver CS5. In this series of videos, we've been looking a lot at the tools that Dreamweaver gives you to improve your coding experience. And we're going to continue that by talking about some of the code view tools over here, as well as the tag listing down here at the bottom. And actually, so that we can get access to some of the menus down here at the bottom and record them in the video, I'm actually going to restore my window. So it's only taking up part of the um, space here. And you're going to notice that every time I click in a different area, I'm going to get a different set of tags down here. For example, I click here on Meta, and I have Head and Meta. I click here on um, Title, and I get Head and Title. So whatever tag you currently have selected is going to show down here in the footer. I just clicked on the tag div, the ID wrapper, and you'll see it gives me that option right there. And since that's nested inside of the body tag, I also see body right there. If I was to scroll down here and select maybe one of these link, uh, list items, you're going to see that it's showing me that I'm in the body tag, in a div called wrapper, in a section called nav, that's an HTML5 tag, and then in a div called left nav, I'm inside of a UL tag, and I've got an LI tag. So it's going to give you the complete inheritance or the complete nesting of whatever it is you have selected. Now, I can actually right click on these things and do some things. For example, I can right click here and say remove tag. Doing that removes that li tag. Now I didn't actually want to go ahead and do that, so I'm going to go ahead and do, go ahead and do undo remove tag and it puts it back on there. What I can also do is right click right there and I can go ahead and set id from right here. I can set the class from right here or go into the quick tag editor, which is what I'm going to select right now. And you're going to see that it brings up a little box right here. And I am able to highlight, and I could change this to an OL. And again, that's more useful than it was before. But one advantage is that it changes the closing tag at the same time you change the opening tag. If I just simply came up here and changed UL, I would have to go find the corresponding closing tag and change it. But by using my quick navigation and right clicking and saying quick tag editor and changing that to OL there, I saved myself a step. And again, that may be something that you use a lot, may be something you don't use hardly at all. We can also set classes from this point. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down here, and here I've got my footer area content. And you'll see if I scroll down in my footer view, I've got that there as well. I'm going to go ahead and highlight footer area content. I'm going to right click on that P, because that's the tag that it's in. I'm going to go to set class and select footer text and you're going to see it automatically put that class style into that particular tag. And again, there's a wide variety of different ways that you can do these things. It's whatever works the best for you. So we went ahead and put a class ID in there as well. And now when I click on the P tag, you're going to see that the P tag reflects that class style, just as this div reflects its ID in this div as well. So you get a lot of information about the nesting from right down here, as well as a lot of functionality from coming in here and making changes, especially with the Quick Tag Editor. And again, that Quick Tag Editor may not look um, really fantastic when you're dealing with two tags that are relatively close to each other, 
but when you're dealing with tags that may uh, be a long distance from each other, finding that correct corresponding tag um, every time can be tough. So uh, definitely avail yourself of that. I'm going to go ahead and re-expand my window so it fills the entire screen. And we also have some tools over here to the code view. Now these aren't available in design view. They're just available in code view. And I'm actually going to go into split view here so I can see both the design and the code view. Now, if one of the things that you can change from over here is actually the wrapping. By default, the wrapping will keep all of your code in this screen. You can see there is a horizontal scroll bar down here at the bottom, but I can't actually use it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the wrapping that's on here. And all these buttons have little tool tips. For instance, I can turn the line numbering off and on from right there. I can highlight invalid code. You know, there's word wrap. I'm going to go ahead and click that. And you're going to see that now none of my lines of code are wrapping. So I have to scroll over to see things. But you can still see relatively more lines of code when you have wrapping off. In this case, I can see lines of code between 4, uh, let's say between 1 and 20 here. If I turn the wrapping off, or I turn the wrapping on, excuse me, you're going to see I can now see lines 1 through 13 here. And if I've got big blocks or big paragraphs, like here, you can see even less. So that word wrap may work very well for the way you write um, code, especially if you're not using a split window, if you're doing the, the, uh, just the straight code window. You may want to turn that off. Now, you can highlight blocks of code from over here in the line numbers. For example, I'm going to go ahead and highlight lines 5 through 10, my entire head area. And you're going to see I get these little controls over here. I can click on that minus sign, and you're going to see I collapse everything in there. And this may be very useful for you, especially when you're dealing with long HTML pages, or if you're dealing with um, just extraneous comments or things like that. You want to keep them, but you don't necessarily want to save them. So I'll highlight that again and go ahead and click that and you'll see exactly how I can continue to do that. There's my section and finally my footer. So now I've gone ahead and I've collapsed all of those sections into just a few. I can highlight and delete a couple of lines there. And I can even highlight. And I'm actually going to hit tab to indent that in. That's a trick. If you want to indent, just hit tab when you have them highlighted. Shift tab will bring them back. Shift tab. Tab and shift tab. And I can collapse it again just by clicking like that. Now to expand these items, you just simply click on the item and then click the plus sign. And you'll see they expand out again just like that. So this may be very helpful for you. This is normally what I do um, when I'm trying to hide comments in a document. You know, or maybe I want to hide the head section because I don't change that very often. I could do it from uh, do it with this technique as well. Also, if you're interested in seeing the high definition 1280 by 720 videos, please go to createthenet.com. When we upload these videos to video sharing services, they always shrink the video size down and decrease the quality, so they come out a little bit fuzzy. If you go to the website, you can see the full resolution versions of these videos.